Well, it's first thing in the morning as usual, and I'm heading off for a bit of a mountain walk. I'm going up the Nantle Ridge in Snowdonia, and it is a beautiful morning. It's about five o'clock, just coming up to sunrise. Got a long climb ahead of me. Don't think there's anything interesting for the first part, uh, but I'm gonna crack on. Well, I haven't come far already and I've had a beautiful bit of light over the mountains as you may have seen from a couple of the images or the b-roll. Stunning morning and actually a lot warmer than I thought too so hopefully it's going to be a very pleasant outing. Now camera wise I have a little Sony RX100 Mark I for colour work. Um, perfect for hiking, a lot smaller than the last time I came out and I'll talk about that later and also if you look here Attached to my rucksack, I have my Nikon F80 with a zoom on it, uh, an all-in-one zoom. The idea being that this time I'm not going to miss shots by having to stop, unpack the gear, set the tripod up. I'm going to work a lot more flexibly. Now you may remember on a previous vlog of mine, if you've seen any, that I came up another Welsh mountain not so long ago and I brought with me a Nikon D610 digital camera, full frame, and the uh, F80 I've got here, along with uh, two lenses, two big lenses, and a lot of gear, a big tripod, well biggish, lots of food, lots of water, and uh, at the end of the video I did a what's in my bag and I compared the systems and I said that the the gear was a bit, of a, a bit of a burden on the trip, and it was. And I got far more tired after the clips finished. As I walked back to the car, I got lost. Went through a whole marshy area. Oh, my feet were hurting. Uh, my knees were sore. Uh, I really got uh, a bit dejected, and I hadn't uh, taken any pictures on the way back down, despite there being lots of good material. Anyway, enough whinging. Um, this time, I've come out with a different setup. A much lighter setup and I'm hoping and so far it's working it's going to allow me to take more spontaneous pictures and not miss those uh, opportunities should we say because I feel a bit knackered. Okay I'm at the top of the first mountain which is called the Garn which is confusing because there's another one called the Garn which I went up just a few months ago in a different part of Snowdonia. Anyway let's just spin you around uh, give you an idea of how absolutely incredibly Stunningly beautiful it is up here this morning. Now, there's actually no wind. There is no wind on top of a Welsh mountain in Snowdonia. Um, not something you can say very often. It's fabulous, it's warm. It's gone a bit hazy and misty, but who cares? I'm shooting mainly black and white anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna have a quick snack and the mountain I'm going up, I haven't got a screen so I can't point accurately, is over that way, uh, quite a jagged edge and I'm gonna head then off over to those uh, those ridges over that way, sort of like thing. Uh, yeah, very very specific there. Um, yeah, so a uh, bit of uh, bit of B-roll and uh, see you in a minute.
Well, I've just got to the top of another hill, as you might guess by my physical condition, and the views are just better and better. It's amazing. You spin you around, I'm on the bright side at the moment. Now we've got the misty valley behind, which I've just come up across to some distant mountains. And the route I'm taking is directly behind me over to that obelisk over there. Fantastic. Now the next bit of the walk looks quite a bit easier than the bit I've been doing, I'll just spin you around. Now that's going up there to that monument, obelisk, whatever. The mist is closing in a little bit, but uh, I'm not worried, it's lovely and warm. Got my map, navigation aids, etc. Um, oh, it's fantastic. Did I say it's fantastic? Right, oh, uh, top of the mountain, uh, what's in the bag time? I don't normally do these things, but uh, I think on these particular walks, the equipment you carry is critical, absolutely critical, um, because it's quite strenuous and you need to keep the weight down. On a previous trip, I did moan quite a lot about the weight of the equipment, so I've done something about it on this one. So let's start with my film camera, a Nikon F80 with a 28 to 200 all in one zoom. I'm shooting with HP5 Plus, and I'm rating it at ISO or EI 800. And the reason I'm doing that is twofold. I'm using a single stop because of the yellow filter. So I need to compensate for that if I want a handhold, which I do. But more importantly, the, the contrast is quite low. There's a lot of mist around and I want to uh, expand that contrast range in development. So by pushing it a stop and using a special developer, I will get a, a greater range in there. It won't be so flat and dull and gray. I can actually choose later how I manipulate it, whether it's in the uh, Lightroom or a Darkroom. So that's my camera. Um, like I say, HP5 Plus is the film I've got. Little digital camera. That's the Sony RX100 uh, Mark I. Um, the very first generation of the one inch sensor. Brilliant little thing. Didn't plan on shooting colour today, but I'm glad I brought it because there was a bit of a bit of a sunrise and the uh, lovely clouds, as you could see at the start of the trip. The bag, the bag is my Osprey 22 litre. It's a smaller model. I brought the 44 last time, but I got less kit this time, so it's not a problem. Most of the weight is water. Now I have a two litre platypus bag in there, like a camel back, uh, nearly full. And I also have another bottle of water because I like to drink a lot when I'm uh, I'm out walking, keep me hydrated. And the good thing is, as I'm drinking it, the bag's getting lighter. So, you know, win-win really. Now the poles are out again, but something I've done this time is to attach a quick release tripod plate on there. So I can put my Nikon F80 on and I've effectively got a monopod. Now, the good thing about that is it's given me another couple of stops. So when I rack the lens out, so 200 millimeters and things get a little bit slow, you know, a couple more stops, well worth having if it's a little bit dull and misty. And obviously I can put the GoPro on there and talk as well. So that's a win-win that is. And the reason I bought these poles, by the way, is because they had the little tripod thread on the, the top. So very useful. Got plenty of food with me, plenty of food and nibbles, snacks, sort of uh, jam butties. Um, it's a delicacy in Britain. And I've got nuts and I've got like energy bars and I've also got my usual bananas. Um, something we're talking about is my little GoPro Hero 7. Now all the footage you've seen apart from this is taken on the, the GoPro. Uh, I love this thing. It, obviously image quality is not as good as a big camera but it's tiny. It usually sort of sits on my belt or I can point it out in front of me. I can point it down at my feet. Uh, it's stabilized. The sound's pretty good on it. The batteries aren't bad at all. Absolutely love it. It's not without its faults. There are faults and glitches with it which annoy me at times but overall best camera I've used for vlogging. And it's also worth mentioning the, the, the tripod I brought me today, which I use for my uh, GoPro, 
You can't see it at the moment, I'll show you it because obviously it's supporting the iPhone which is doing this clip. It's a little Mi Photo uh, Road Trip Air which I picked up from Amazon when it was on offer. Um, it's very compact. It's very, very compact indeed. It's, it's got a sort of a very good extendable centre column, which isn't very sturdy, but it's brilliant for vlogging. I can get quite some height on it. And I stuff it in my belt when I'm walking along normally. And it makes it, uh, it's a robust little thing. It, it's all metal. You know, it's not going to fall to bits like the, uh, the cheap ones I carry normally. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, my kit. So I'm going to pack up now and I'm going to head off down the ridge to the next uh, peak and then work my way back down the mountain. Now a lovely descent. Uh, now there's a massive mountain in front of me, which is I think it's Craigcombe Sullin, and I'm not going up thankfully uh, because I was up there three years ago just before I started vlogging, and uh, hey, it was a lovely walk, and I think I've got a few nice images, so uh, I'll put them up now. Now, one thing that's really surprised me about this morning is that I haven't seen another human being. Nobody else has come on this trail, either from the east or the west. Nobody following me, nobody approaching it in the other direction. I saw a couple of cars arrive just after me in the car park, but it is one of the popular starting points for Snowden, and absolutely everybody goes up Snowden, uh, and I don't. Um, this is fabulous, though. You know, you could be in the middle of, of nowhere, but uh, it's so accessible. It's absolutely fantastic as well when you get the place to yourself on a morning like this. Well, it's been uh, ooh, probably two or three hours since I started to drop down off the mountain and I've taken a few uh, opportunistic shots on the way down. Hopefully you've, sorry I'm just scaring sheep here, hopefully you've uh, seen some of those, hopefully they came out. And I'm going through the wooded forest section now, probably about another couple of miles back to the car, it's just seeing if I see anything. Still enjoying it, uh, the equipment isn't weighing me down like last time. Huge improvement, um, still tired because you know, I'm not that fit, but um, yeah, I have enjoyed it a lot more this time and I've taken a lot more photographs and I think I've taken better ones as well, to be honest. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the video, my ramble up in the Welsh hills. I, I really had a good time, and, and I can put a lot of that down to the 
the equipment. This uh, Nikon F80 with the single zoom meant I never had to change lenses. I always had it on my camera strap with me at all times. You could see the way the light was changing, particularly early in the video when uh, the mist was blowing in across the hills and it was changing every second. Now, if I'd have had to get the camera out of the bag and set the tripod up, I'd have missed a lot of those shots. I really would have uh, regretted not taking a lightweight camera like this. So I really enjoyed it and the weight made a huge difference as well. I didn't feel as tired at the end of the trip. Now, it may be different if you're sort of like in your 20s and I was certainly the same when I used to carry a heavy tripod. I think nothing of going up in the hills all day but it starts to weigh you down over time and that saps your energy and your enthusiasm. So I'm gonna actually take this to its logical conclusion on another trip, uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks or a couple of months time, certainly this summer. And I'm gonna go even lighter. I mean, this is a, a fairly lightweight outfit. It's probably coming in at about sort of, you know, 1.2 kilos or something like that around a, just a few pounds. But I think I can actually go lighter and still get a good shot. So uh, I'm gonna try something uh, even more basic, even cheaper. Um, just to see how it works out really and uh, yeah so I do hope you enjoyed the video as ever and I will see you on the next trip thanks for watching